everyone, Nada here, and today I'm gonna take a look at 15 different Gen 4 NVMe SSDs that I have right here, uh, because there are actually so many of these on the market, and it can be difficult and quite a bit overwhelming to choose the right one, especially when they're all being sold as super fast Gen 4 drives, while being vastly different in terms of performance and in terms of pricing. And while there are some pretty good ones that are definitely worth getting, there are also some models out there that are actually far behind and should be avoided. So if you're looking to get a new Gen 4 SSD for your PC or for your PlayStation, for example, this video is for you. But first, this video is brought to you by Seasonic and their Prime Series power supplies. These top quality power supplies are very efficient, they're whisper quiet, extremely reliable and my go-to choice for most of my test rigs and builds around here. And to make the deal even sweeter, Seasonic wraps it all up in a cozy 12 year long warranty. Check them out using the links in the description below. Let's start with some general information that applies to all of these drives, like thermals, for example. Now, high performance NVMe SSDs get hot and will end up throttling if you stress them for long enough. So uh, you should always have adequate cooling for your drives. Uh, many of these drives, as you can see, come with a heatsink and heatsinks uh, have become pretty standard on most recent motherboards. But if your motherboard doesn't have it for some reason, uh, you can actually just grab a decent heatsink from Amazon, for example, for about $10 or so, and that will be completely enough. So uh, you shouldn't stress about thermals, but you should definitely make sure that your drive has some cooling going on. Another very important thing to know is that the capacity of the drive can impact its performance. So smaller capacities like 256 or 512 gigabytes uh, will usually struggle to keep up with the larger ones. But once you look at one terabyte and up, that is no longer a concern. So if you're going for a smaller capacity, the performance numbers will not actually be the same as the larger ones I have in my graphs. And do keep in mind, the smaller SSDs usually have a much worse price per gigabyte ratio uh, now that SSDs have become pretty cheap. Uh, so I personally find it very hard to recommend the lower capacity drives at all. So unless you have a very good reason to buy a small SSD, uh, my advice is to just go for one terabyte or larger, because that is where you hit that best performance peak and a good value ratio. Even if that means uh, skipping Gen 4 and getting a large Gen 3 drive, but I'm actually not going to go into Gen 4 versus Gen 3 today. Uh, this video is just for people that specifically want Gen 4 drives. Anyway, uh, let's go over my test rig that I used to test all these drives on. Now I have the ASUS ROG Maxima Z690 Hero motherboard with an Intel Core i9-12900K, Corsair DDR5 memory, and I slapped a low RPM scythe fan on top to give a little bit of an airflow to the motherboard and the SSDs that are being tested. As always, this is powered with Seasonic Prime power supply, and for the operating system, I went with Windows 11. Now you shouldn't expect the results to change all that much uh, with uh, Windows 10 or an AMD CPU, but it can vary a bit, so keep that in mind. And if an SSD came with a heatsink, I was using that one. And for the ones that don't have a heatsink included, I was using the one on the motherboard itself. Now, I did not count the thin metal sticker that is supposed to spread the heat as a heatsink. I just counted the proper ones, right? And right away, we can get rid of two drives of these 15 because of their extremely weak performance. Now, to make it clear, I don't really expect cheap SSDs to offer the best performance, but both the XPG S50 Lite and the Transcend 240S showed really problematic performance in small block read and write tests, and that is something that a lot of the regular everyday tasks rely on, so I'm not going to talk about these two anymore, because uh, even if they might be really cheap, there are plenty of other drives that cost the same, or even less, that do not not have such an issue. So those two are out and then I'm going to split the 13 I have left into several groups to make this big comparison a bit easier for everyone. So let's start with the absolute fastest Gen 4 SSDs you can buy. As usual, I like to rely on the PCMark storage benchmarks because they make it very easy to uh, point out which drives are good for which sort of use cases. Uh, and the PCMark 10 quick test is a very nice and light test that replicates and many of the basic things we do with our PCs. 
activities like loading applications, for example, like working in documents, like playing games, and so on. And even though you don't really need a super high-end drive for this kind of use, you would expect the best SSDs to also be great at these light tasks, right? And here, the Western Digital Black SN850 and the Kingston KC3000 are at the very top, but no less than eight of the other drives are not that far behind. The full PC Mark 10 suite uh, is a much more intense test that replicates a more of an active use of the drive and this is more aimed at people uh, who really rely on their storage a bit more like for video editors for example or when you're looking to get a main drive for your pc now the ranking does shift a little bit here with both the firecuda 530 and the samsung 980 pro going up a few spots but again is the western digital black sn850 and the kingston kc3000 that really stand out the most and now let's look at the consistency test uh, which is an extremely heavy test that runs for several hours and includes rewriting the entire drive multiple times so it really puts the drive to work to almost an unrealistic amount and here it is the seagate firecuda 530 that easily holds up the best leaving a big gap to the 980 pro which is in the second place and then followed by the same sn850 and the kc3000 now gen 4 drives are heavily marketed with their sequential read and write speeds and while those numbers are of limited importance when it comes to real world use uh, they can tell us which drives push the limits of the 7000 megabytes per second which is roughly the gen 4 specification and which don't and the same names as before are on the top of these graphs uh, joined by the msi m480 and the aorus 7000s uh, while some other drives are barely offering higher speeds than you would expect from gen 3 ssds so in my opinion and looking at these results if you're looking for a gen 4 ssd that offers the highest performance you should be looking at the western digital black sn850 the kingston kc3000 the samsung 980 pro and the seagate firecuda 530 and then choosing between those will really depend on your personal needs so if you expect to really stress your ssd without any breaks for whatever reason uh, i would say the firecuda is the way to go plus it is available in a four terabyte version as well so for anyone looking for a lot of storage this makes a lot of sense the 980 pro is a bit more consistent with its performance throughout multiple benchmarks though plus uh, offers full hardware-based encryption which the other drives do not also uh, samsung drives tend to be on some kind of a discount all the time so there is something to be said about that as well but the SNA50 and the KC3000 are still the fastest drives for most regular users. Uh, between those two, the SN850 tends to be cheaper in most parts of the world and is probably the first option that you should look at. Uh, here in the EU, it often costs just a little bit more than budget Gen 4 drives or even SATA drives for that matter. But prices these days are very unstable, as you already know, so make sure that you check and compare prices in your region before making any decisions about anything really. So let's talk about the Gen 4 drives that offer a lot of value. And this is a bit more difficult because prices do change so much all the time. And they also vary wildly per region. And when it's all about value, even a small price change can shift the whole balance completely. Now, for my value recommendations today, I'm gonna look at EU and US prices from the last week. But if you're watching this in the future, again, make sure you check the recent price in your region. Now let's look at the EU pricing first. Uh, surprisingly enough, uh, most of the prices here haven't really changed in the last few weeks and that does make it easier to pick some winners. And I would say Western Digital Europe does it right here because SN850 is one of the fastest drives but also one of the more affordable Gen 4 SSDs in Europe. Now, given its performance and that price point, it is pretty hard to recommend any drive that costs more than that. Uh, this is one of the best drives to buy for a reasonable price. But if you wanna spend even less than that and you don't really need highest performance, you have three options. So the 
Sabrent Rocket 4 is a tiny bit cheaper, but the price difference isn't enough to uh, justify the performance difference we saw. Uh, the Rocket Q4 is considerably cheaper, but it's one of the few 4-bit drives, which does hurt its performance and it also hurts its lifespan. Uh, it is a lot slower in every benchmark and in my opinion, not a very good buy for most users out there, unless you're looking for a lot of storage. Because of that QLC memory, it actually goes up to eight terabytes. So if you only care about value and you also need a large capacity instead of speed, the Rocket Q is a fair option. The SN750 SE is the odd one out there, I would say. Uh, unlike the XPG and Transcend, it doesn't really have any real issues, but it's really more of a Gen 3 drive in a Gen 4 package. Now, the only thing going for it is the fact that it's often priced accordingly, so that makes it somewhat forgivable, but I personally wouldn't call it a Gen 4 drive myself, and nor consider it a great alternative when the much, much better SN850 isn't that much more expensive. Now, looking at the US prices, things are a bit different here. So the SN850 is still offering a good price to performance ratio, but there are several SSDs that can actually save you a significant amount of money. Now, the most interesting drive here is the Rocket NVMe 4. So not the QLC one, but the regular 3-bit MLC drive uh, that currently costs $129 for one terabyte, and a week earlier, it was only $110. And I would say while it's not topping the charts in terms of performance, it does perform consistently well uh, without any real flaws to worry about. And when you're shopping for a good value SSD, uh, saving somewhere between $30 to $50 per terabyte is a huge deal. Now, of course, you can still consider the Rocket Q uh, and the SN750 SE for the same reasons I mentioned before, but I think that the regular Rocket NVMe 4 offers the best price to performance ratio for people in the US. Now, the next category I want to talk about is all the drives that fall in between. So unlike with peripherals, laptops or monitors, uh, there's not that much subjectivity when it comes to SSDs. Uh, they either have to perform really well or they have to have a great price or both. Uh, there's very little room for anything else. Now, I have a lot of drives that perform completely fine, but they're either just outperformed or kind of made redundant because of their price. And I would say the MSI M480 and the Aura 7000S are the best examples of this. Uh, they actually perform really great, uh, being just on the heels of the best performing drives I've tested so far, but their current high price is what is keeping them from becoming a clear recommendation. Now, the Firecuda 520, the regular Aorus drive, and the Patriot Viper uh, can all make perfect sense as well if their prices go down in the future. Until then, uh, they have to remain in this SSD limbo. But how does this affect you if you're looking to buy an SSD for your PlayStation? Now, for the most part, the situation is more or less the same. So the best SSDs for PC are the better choice for PlayStation users as well. But there are actually some things to consider. So performance-wise, uh, Sony recommends that your SSD needs to read the data at at least 5,500 megabytes per second, which technically disqualifies about half of the SSDs in this list. Now, I haven't really seen any performance issues if you ignore this spec. Uh, game loading times are pretty much the same, but I, I don't know how that will affect some future games and some future updates. So I would personally just play it safe and just pick a drive that does score higher than 5,500 megabytes per second. Keep in mind, we're looking at the graphs. You can skip the really long stress test results as the drives in your PlayStation will just read your game files. That's pretty much it. Now, you also need to think about the size of your heatsink because the space is obviously very limited. Now, if we look at Sony's specs once again, uh, they state that the SSD Plus heatsink can be no taller than 11.25 millimeters or the panel won't fit back on. Uh, but there is actually a bit of room to work here. So the Aura 7000S, which is technically out of spec, fits just fine, but the MSI M480, Corsair MP600, and the regular Sabrent heatsinks do not fit in a PlayStation. So if you go for those or any other SSD that comes without a heatsink, I would suggest 
you buy a low profile third party heatsink that will cost you again about $10 and it will be just fine. Now the PS5 doesn't really stress your SSD that much. So even a very slim heatsink will be enough to avoid thermal throttling. Uh, I have a few suggestions actually, so I'm gonna leave a few links in the description down below and you can check them out. Now, this is all I have prepared for today. Now, I know it's a bit of a mess uh, when you try to compare 15 SSDs, so I do hope this video was clear enough and at least uh, somewhat helpful. Uh, and if you do have any questions, just ask. I will do my best to answer all of them. Also, uh, let me know in the comments down below what would you go for and if there are any SSDs that you would like me to look at. I would love to know your thoughts. So thank you all for watching and see you in the next one. Bye.